Hey guys, so today we are going to start talking about a family of instruments that some people don't even consider to be instruments at all or don't even consider to be an instrument family. These are electronic instruments. Um, a lot of people just don't consider them to be an instrument family or to be real instruments because they're not part of our traditional orchestra or traditional opera. Um, and that's true, but we are starting to see them more and more as composers have a lot more freedom about how they write and what kind of uh, ensembles they write for. Um, and when we think about it, they all create sound in their own unique way. They have their own specific technique, like they're not that different from other instruments. Um, and we can consider them a family because what they all have in common is that they require some kind of electrical current to create sound. Just like all woodwind instruments require us to blow into some kind of tube, all brass instruments require um, a lip buzz, these all require some kind of electricity. And so we can put them all into this family, and so I thought it'd be fun to just talk about them for a week. Um, what's important to kind of keep in mind when we look at electrical instruments is that your computer, what you're watching this on right now, it thinks and speaks in a digital language. There's um, binary, uh, there's just a lot of different ways that your computer communicates with itself, and yet we don't hear any of that. None, none of it um, is audio. We can't hear any of it. So your computer has to turn that digital information into audio that we can actually hear. And so um, all electronic instruments will require some kind of speaker that allows that audio to get from the computer or from whatever electronic hard um, is in there, hardware is in there, to be actual audio waves that we can hear easily. Um, and so what's neat though is that with electronic instruments, there is no limit to the kind of sounds that they can create, to how that they can be used. Um, they just are this endless possibility for composers. And I think because of that, a lot of the music that we hear that involves electronic instruments or that features electronic instruments can sound really different than what we're used to because composers don't have to follow any rules. It's not like... Um, a trombone that can only play a certain set of notes. They can just kind of write whatever they want. And so it can sound really different. So we'll hear some examples this week that um, you might sit there and go, I'm not sure if I like that. And that's totally fine. It takes a while of listening to music like this to really get a sense um, of how everything works. Um, much of what we hear today um, in like our radio songs and everything like that involves a process called looping. And this is where you can record a small little section of music and then have the computer repeat it over and over and over again. And then you would add another small clip that works with the first one and you would have it repeat at the same time so they're both going together. And then you create, um, you just keep adding these layers as many as you want. Um, and it's used all the time in music production so that a drummer only has to play through the section of music one time instead of having to repeat the exact same thing through a three minute song. They can just record it one time, the computer repeats it over and over and it's good to go. Um, I've attached a video to this where a street performer is using something called live looping. So this is where he probably set up his computer um, and his soundboard ahead of time with, okay, this is how many times this is going to repeat, this is how many times this is going to repeat, and he assigned it every single one. And then he went through and live um, recorded all of those little clips, and then the computer started repeating them. So that means that all on his own, he can play multiple different instruments and create really a whole band, and with the help of that computer, he can do it all on his own, all live and that's all done with looping so you'll hear all of that kind of go on um, I hope you guys really enjoy it and we're gonna talk about um, some really cool instruments like the theremin this week and on Friday I'm going to have a special guest um, one of my friends is down in Chicago um, learning how to become a DJ himself so he's gonna show us some of his equipment and his production um, and I think that'll be really really fun for you guys so I hope you enjoy learning about uh, electronic instruments this week and enjoy this video of live looping. 